Welcome to Everything Comes Together. My name is Srinag. I'm an architectural photographer based in Chennai, India. My guests today are architects Amar Choudhury and BG Sanjeevi of S Plus AD Studio. On Everything Comes Together, I speak with people in the broader photography, architecture and design communities. while the regular episodes are life stories that talk about how everything came together every now and then i will speak to guests and explore just one thing in part 1 of the interview amar and sanjeevi talk about how straight out of college they set up a training institute for architecture students and the role they played in putting a final polish on their students education So how do you guys actually meet? Right, it was uh, back in 2011 when mm-hmm. we guys started our uh, bachelor's together, a uh, bachelor's in architecture together at Miasi. Okay. So that's when we actually met. Right. And uh, then on, luckily we were the same group for a couple of projects, and uh, it it just went on and on and on. And uh, we are a good rapport. We are a good wavelength. And then after that, even during our internships, he he uh, I was in Bangalore and he went abroad. Then after we came back, we worked uh, together for a thesis. And then after that, we uh, coincidentally got in the same firm, which is KSM. So it started 2011, 2016. We finished our bachelor. Then we joined the same practice. Yeah. And uh, then on, we worked together for about three and a half years. And during the uh, course of time, we started our own uh, practice too. Yeah. So. At Mia C, did you guys work together a lot? In fact, the first ever studio project coincidentally, just because Sanjeev was right next to me, we were like, okay, let's work on this together, <laughs> and that itself went off quite well. So that's when, after that, every subsequent project, we ended up saying, okay, let's pair up, let's pair up. So it was almost like a yin yang situation that was happening. So you had a good working relationship before you graduated. Exactly, right. exactly, which is what. led us to you know actually stepping into okay let's do something professionally as well because uh, like there are things which i am good at which he can you know this thing and things which he can do which i can't so it was like a perfect balance when we were working working on anything for that matter of fact so it it went in like the flow was quite smooth so that that's the whole thing yeah and um so when you were in college is when you guys actually started uh, tutoring your juniors right in uh, not directly but yes we would kind of have these juniors come to us during recess and everything and we started like teaching them stuff which we had learned from our seniors so so that's how it started but it was a very informal way the way it was happening back back in college more like uh, an interaction i would say yeah it was more years. more of an interaction which i would say even our later on thing was kind of more like an interaction than really a class or a teaching setup so. setup yeah. <coughs> yeah yeah okay so As you said, you guys got out when you graduated. You both joined KSM Architecture, right? And um, so now you are already you had a full plate working for a proper firm, right? And uh, so, how did you actually think about putting together a program to tutor people more formally after you got out of college? Um, it was it was actually something that we were thinking about, like four of us, like back in college, were thinking about it. You know, let's start something. Uh, the thing is, like, there are some things in architecture school which are not covered, which is understood that you know the students can learn on their own, mm-hmm. and that's when, including us, we start running into these institutes. You know, like trying to understand in terms of softwares, yeah. and uh, we realized then that we are taught a lot of things which you don't necessarily need. to know you know there's a lot of extra information that you're taught and you also pay for it so that is when we kind of got the idea that let's create like this package where you know tailor made for architects that literally for students exactly mm-hmm. so uh, and you start picking out what you need okay and and put it in like one format so when you actually finish this whole package you're you're kind of you have the ammo to you know deal with everything that come up as purely presentation and software related wise we were to 
inexperienced to teach design so we never even do it you know went into that aspect of it yeah. so yeah that was the whole idea you know let's what we learned over the course of five years from our seniors like we saw youtube videos we went interacted with seniors yeah. it was a lot of trial and error we we're like let's, let's make it easier for these guys and kind of pack it all together over like three to four months and then just give it so give it our uh, main focus like amar had told was we don't teach it from a software uh, academy point of view rather we teach it in relation like how it's applied in architecture okay like practical knowledge exactly so we felt that was very uh, necessary for example when we are telling them uh, commands in autocad yeah. there will be few basic commands and there will be few advanced commands which can uh, help your help the students like you know speed up their work and yeah. they it shouldn't be thought just like a software but rather how it's used in reality like example when you talk about uh, column marking we tell them how these grids are used and what is the use of this line weight the line type and every specific detail it's basically tailored just for architecture students okay. so right from that we have a progress like we teach with 2d we go to 3d we go to renders presentation completely from an architecture point of view and okay. it's it's just to save time and uh, you know it's more like a give and take process we also learn from the students uh, that way what do you mean you learn from the students what did you gain from them so uh, when it comes to softwares we feel that it was never like a teacher student uh, relationship so when we were tutoring our uh, we rather call them our friends so when it when it went there it was more like there would be couple of things which the students might tell us and we would pick it up from them so like after every batch we will have a review so we yeah. we last the students saying what in what way we could have improved and what are what are your thoughts on this that and maybe sometimes we could even pick up few things you know have a discussion together and you know that's that's how we grow so that's how it's been uh, in the past 3 years 3 4 years okay just, just to add to that it's, it, the thing is we never we've never really taught before right we've always been yeah. students and right. you suddenly jump up and say okay we are going to be on this side of the table and uh, the first batch was actually completely trial and error you know i remember after the first ever class that we had we messaged on the whatsapp group like you know how did we do we were literally like how did we do and a string of like you know negative comments came this was not right that was not right this is the audio, audio wasn't clear uh you know we couldn't hear in the start of the class this that etc etc and then we were like okay and then the next class that was taken care of and right. like he said uh, then it became a batch wise thing you know what did we miss out in this batch and then we got so it took us actually i would say a decent like a few months to actually get our format right like how we taught stuff because sometimes you start teaching and you wouldn't know where to stop you know mm, how yeah. long to spend in one segment and then go to the next one so it took us a while like i wouldn't say from day one the first two batches were probably the unlucky ones because right. yeah. they were like our guinea pigs we tested it out on <laughs> them but as it went on like yeah it it kind of formulated into batches. something proper we knew yeah. what had to be done and later on we started adding things so we knew where to uh, you know remove few things which weren't actually necessary for them yeah and and then on we uh, we started even adding uh, portfolio making ideas like not not really tell them how to do it but rather you know push them to do it the the right way right and what what actually goes into portfolio making um see so when you see a portfolio like an architecture portfolio like all of us by the end of third year we were like you have to do internship next year and you need to start applying to a professional setup and basically you need to showcase all of your talents what you've done in the past 3 years or 4 years within like one booklet of 14 to 15 pages because many firms have that limit as well you give it for 5 mb not more than 20 pages so it's more of you know when a, a professional setup is hiring you as an intern they don't really see the design aspect as much because face it as an intern you don't really get to design that you will probably be just a small part of the firm yeah. so you need to put in all your talents in in the form of one booklet in the form of drawings right. and it that's where the beautification of drawings the way you put across an idea comes forth because at the end of the day it's the more visual aspect that puts you above others than really the the content like we've seen some students who get like brilliant designs but they've not been able to put it on paper and this was an issue i faced to back in college because manually my skills weren't as good so i had to find ways of you know showing across what i'm trying to to convey so that is what really went into the portfolio making you know you have 12 12 a1 sheets you pack that up in 4a4 sheets Concise. how do you do that 
Okay. What are the points you put? What are the points you don't need to put? So it's that filtration process will, that we went into the whole. So it's also a lot about choosing what is worthy enough to be in exactly. your portfolio. Exactly. exactly. That's that's you know the biggest challenge for photographers as well is the same thing. So and many people they struggle with that even after they've even after they've been working for a couple of years. The biggest challenge is you are you are attached to a certain picture or probably in your case a certain design you'd personally be attached to there's something in that that you like but it's not necessarily your best work or it doesn't show you off well so that that so these were the two main things you focused on training for software and portfolio making yeah. And also just uh, one more thing to add to the portfolio is the variety you try to portray. You know, you don't want to just put academic stuff like I've done this in third sem, second sem, first sem, etc. Yeah. You also need to show that there's more to you beyond the academic scope, like be it competitions, be it even Fair architectural enough. essays, be it architectural yeah. photography, like everything that you can offer to a firm. Because I remember... Uh, like some of our projects we've actually shot using the interns mm. uh, because they were really good in architectural photography you're telling them there's more to me than just an architecture field like i have more to offer to you yeah so there's a lot a lot of times you would say like what is it that apart from academic you've done in college like even if it's just nasa or be it culturals or anything put it across tell them Difference. you're more than just uh, just a student in the field yeah. but it this sounds very interesting were there a lot of people doing this in madras Back when we started, from our knowledge, maybe there were, but from our knowledge, there were there weren't many because we couldn't uh, get. Actually, one of a very similar this thing was uh, by Triple O had started this, but he okay. too Tahir had also done it in a very. I was also a student of Tahir back in this thing, okay. and he had started something similar. Like there was one uh, workshop purely on portfolio, and then individual softwares were being done. Okay. But in our case, what we did was kind of put it all together as one. Like you know, you don't have to come. Separately for portfolio, you don't have to come separately for it's this. Part of the Everything course. comes under this. Yeah. yeah. So back when you said this was what was probably our appeal point like you know everyone got attracted that to you know such a nominal price you are getting everything yeah, after yeah, this thing yeah. so that's why like the initial aspect like there was no shortage of students like the demand was really high and yeah. we weren't able to accommodate that many in the first initial part three years down the line there are way too many in fact a lot of our students have started the same thing okay. the one time when we got this whatsapp message like you're like this number this name seems very them. familiar like, and then we go back and like, oh, sixth batch. This <laughs> dude has started. They were texting you saying that there's... No, no, no. Okay. We got it through someone else saying something forward. similar has been started. And we're like, this name oh. sounds very familiar. And then we go back to our list and we're like, oh, this, this is the is guy. And he started second or... Yeah, a lot of them have started that. Okay. So now now I would say like, it, there are way too many. Like there are a lot. If you actually go to Instagram, you'll see so many Sponsored of these... Uh, software courses package courses that have started so okay. now i would say though now we no longer do it yeah. uh, the demand has gone so high that now i don't think we would have stood a chance <laughs> because now we are kind of like three years later and these students probably know Fresh. more than what we knew no. we know right now yeah so if we were to get back in the field as like competition for them we would fail miserably <laughs> <laughs> but back in the day we were like yeah you know, there were nobody else who were doing it. Back in the day was what, four years ago? The software is something that develops every six months. Yeah. <laughs> they move fast. You have to be updated. Okay, fast. just to give you an idea, like when we started, we were teaching Lumion 5. And now okay. there's Lumion 11 being rolled out. So in a matter of three years. Seven generations in three years. <laughs> that's, so that, that's a that's lot of improvement. And now we've also not had the time, like when we started practicing professionally, to explore a software in the same manner, yeah. like how we did back in college. You know, now we yeah. know us, but set of skills. We try to put that because now we are, our focus is on something else altogether. Yeah. So like I said, now we don't do a lot of things which... Uh, and I feel like sometimes when I'm working in office and like uh, I'll have to ask an intern, how did you do do this and then they'll be like you know there's this command in CAD or this command in Sketch and I'm like oh okay. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> so where, where were you running the classes from? Our own space we we rented out a space in Tinagar. Okay. It was a commercial property. And how soon after you graduated did you rent it out? Uh, two months. Yeah actually 20, months. 2016 uh, uh, around May uh, not May uh, June is when we finished July yeah. we graduated. Yeah. Our first batch started in October. Yeah. 
uh, actually the first three to four months we uh, we were hunting for a space terribly because nobody really would give it out to you on a short period of time mm -hmm. the thing was we didn't know how long this was going to work for yeah. you know so we were scared to commit for a year yeah. or you know longer than that so yeah. we found a space that said okay you give it to us on a monthly basis we are not, not, not signing a contract or anything for you the first one was in fact in Nunga Baba okay we went there and it was like a very like you had to go back of go up a flight of dingy stairs and then you would come and then it was just there was nothing it was just one empty hall with like aluminium partition the windows were drawn up you couldn't open the windows because they were in a bad condition broken yeah. fall ceiling so that's when we were like okay we found a place we need to put in some infrastructure in it oh. and we didn't really have enough money to you know buy everything so we went across Chennai scrap shopping. We bought old tires, uh, yeah, tires old wooden planks, Spray old paint. chairs, used chairs, everything. We put it together and then one day we brought paints. We sat across a weekend painting everything, setting up the whole space, deep cleaning. One night we sat and just deep cleaned the whole, whole space. space up. So over a weekend we set up the whole Try to make it two days of hard work. <laughs> so you guys did this yourselves? We did Company. it ourselves. We Company. did it ourselves. Uh, and uh, even like there was a lot of error. We had never done carpentry before. So we were trying to make tables out of old tires and planks. <laughs> and we finish a table up. And, and then finally we wobbles. keep our laptop and the table starts like springing up. So like we need additional yes. support. It's on rubber. <laughs> it's it on is. rubber. Which we, we thought we'd get something very creative. We are like we are thinking out of the box. Chalo, let's do it. Yeah. Then we got these tires, we set them up, we cleaned them, we painted them and all of that. We keep the planks, they're like, okay, done. Now let's keep our laptops. The minute we kept the laptop, it, it just goes like, like this. I'm like, Amar, you keep your laptop over there now. <laughs> then we're trying to balance it out. It was a, it was a, then we had to add like supports and all of that to uh, make it work. Again, that was temporary. So that, yeah. that thing yeah. that happened, I remember the first batch uh, that came in, we had like this trial session where we were like, you guys come see what we have to offer because that was our first batch. And why would anybody join without any of this thing? And and uh, we were like, come in, we'll give you a gist of what we're going to do for you. And a lot of people came in with their parents. And this is the, they saw this, what we had to offer. <laughs> and the parents were very hesitant. They were like, have you guys done this before? Why, like, you know, do they have to come here? Do you not have a better place? And we were like, in fact, there was this one or two parents. We said, let your daughter attend for the first four or five classes. If she doesn't want, let her not pay the fee. Let her leave. If she likes it, you continue. You know, we actually had to do some dealing yeah. like that for the first batch. Yeah. And that happened and first batch, they were happy and then it, it just actually, continued. For the demo, if I'm not on the first batch, we had just uh, six students. Like we had six students for the entire demo, if I'm not wrong. And then what happened after the presentation, uh, they were like, okay, we will just get back to you. Then we told them, if in case your friends are interested, you could please pass on the word. Uh, maybe they can attend four or five classes and then see if they actually want to continue. You won't believe, like after a couple of days, we got a call saying from six, we have been at 12. We okay. got 12 students in the first batch. Then they were like, and then two more days later, toilet. it became 27. 27. And we were like, we don't have chairs. We, we had bought only like seven, eight chairs. So we went around buying more tables, more, more chairs, chairs, everything. What we hoped to start from one batch became two batches before we even started the started. classes. So the word of mouth had spread that, okay, Very these fun. guys have all of this to offer. Right. So our first set was actually 24 students. Our first ever batch, which we split as two, two. because we couldn't. Uh, yeah. So that was how we... We wanted the personal attention basically. We didn't want like a classroom. Yeah. You want to be able to connect with each exactly. student. Exactly. 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 Discuss, engage in them. And you know, mm. we wanted that sort of a setup. So we said we'll do us 12 and 12. So okay. I would handle six and Amar would take care of the six. Uh, yeah. let's say. So, okay. so, so we started off in a very informal setting and after like I would say a certain amount of time we got in batches, we had gotten some funds and all of that. That's when we finally upgraded like after the sixth batch, we had an air conditioner in and then we had a water cooler in. We could move into a better space. So okay. uh, I guess after seven, eight months, we had enough money to invest Capital into a better Better setup, setup. setup yeah. and after that it was just like, even in fact when we started out we started with a second hand projector and okay. then we had enough this thing to and students would complain we can't read what is written over there yes. and uh, all of that. like this projector we have to sit too close then we had to go from the cable length would not be sufficient we had a lot of problems in the first few batches very, very practical problems that most people don't even think about right. yeah you will only think about it when you Trying to connect it and the cable is not long enough. Exactly. Yeah, so that that's, that yeah. entire first business 
thing, you know, like set, setting something up from scratch. It was a lot of fun, bro. It was so much fun, like just getting on Amazon and we are like, this is four grand, that is five grand. Do we spend the thousand more to, you know, <laughs> spend that? So, because we were working, like I said, of a very small initial investment, what we could put in as tools were like the pocket money that we'd saved and a little bit loan from our parents, like, you know, can we need? Yeah, but this is also because you were students two or three months before you started teaching other students. And you obviously wouldn't have built up any savings. Oh, yeah. Salary from KSM went into this pretty yeah. much. Yeah, that's, that's how it was. That's, that's yeah, how. we had to literally not spend much. We had to like cut down on so many things for the first three months, three, yeah. four months, because yeah. Yeah. we had to save that whatever uh, little money we got to put in uh, in our studio, then buy new things so that we don't hear things like, uh, we are not able to see that letter clearly on top. I mean, when, when no you're Wi Fi, but six months later, we told it's better to invest in a space where the students are happy because they are our marketing agents. Yeah. Okay, that was how it was. If they are going to go back and say that, you know, the infrastructure is not good, out of 10, maybe five students maybe hesitant to come in. So that was that the investment we made was for the students because they, yeah. that they were what. We're going to get us more stuff. So, um, could you just talk a little bit about how how did you structure the program for students? What was their schedule like? Okay, so uh, how it works is generally when you're in a design school, uh, there will be two days for uh, your design submissions. Okay, that usually falls one for, surely falls on a Monday, and other one could be on Thursday or Friday. And we didn't want to keep classes on weekdays, primarily because we are working till 7 and we didn't want to have classes post 7 p.m. because it wouldn't be very tired. So our schedule, how we matched it was, we planned it only during weekends. Okay. On Saturday and Sundays we had planned it. And sometimes you would get uh, queries like, uh, requests rather requests like, uh, tomorrow we have a submission, we might not be able to uh, come to class and we might not be able to finish our sheet. So that time what we used to do is, in the first few hours, let's say we have a class of four hours, yeah. In the first one and a half, two hours, we will cover some theory and give them some practice side by side. So we'll yeah. tell them you implement that for tomorrow. So you rather work in the studio rather than going home and working. You finish your work, you show it over here and we'll tell you what is our suggestion and we can even present it to the whole class, get their inputs and improvise. So yeah. we sort of planned all our classes only during the weekends in two batches and uh, max to max each class will go for four to five hours. And Saturday and Sunday we used to cover up, uh, cover both these batches. Okay. Yeah. So each batch gets one session on Saturday, one session on Sunday. Depends again. So uh, if if the batch is okay with both days, we would keep one batch in the morning and another batch in the evening. Let's like say uh, batch one comes on Saturday morning and the same batch comes on Sunday afternoon. So we could either have a batch on Sunday evening or Sunday morning. So we used to alternate and coordinate, rather coordinate with all the other batches. And we had a problem when we had multiple students uh, from different, like one batch had like four to five different colleges and their submissions needed to be necessarily on the, on the same day. So coordinating that was a bit of a challenge. So we used to be like cancel classes in the last minute, ask if the other batch is willing to come because we were paying a huge yeah. rent like, that time. Like the yeah. management aspect of it was quite tricky. Again, something we'd never done Expected, before. Yeah. So. Uh, it was just the fact of getting so many people together and how to coordinate. So we had like WhatsApp groups for each batch and we tried to create like a formal schedule. Like, you know, this day we're going to cover this, you know, not once did we stick to that. Cause we also had this thing like, you know, we're not going to be like today, we're going to say, for example, start Photoshop and finish Photoshop today. Yeah. If a batch was not able to grasp and get everything that we needed to, that Photoshop probably bled on to the next class as well. So we never really had that okay, by December, this date, this batch is over. We would always have to give a buffer of two to three weeks before starting the work because there will always be extra classes that were required. Yeah, okay. So I guess that's what also kind of stood off from the other institute aspect because if someone did not understand this, we would be willing to take that additional class for them just to explain that factor. So because of which our scheduling was quite quite tricky and also like you said we were working the whole time so it was like a monday to friday with ksm and saturday to sunday with our space so it was like personal life was down the drain and there was no time for anything else nothing else Initially, there was no, in, in no time. fact after ksm's work we used to come back home and we used to work on our freelance projects our freelance projects so 7 home. pm we would get 6 pm 6 30 we would get another ksm go back home at 7 7 30 we'll start work at 7 30 till night 
like that's how we worked on our village house also like yeah. after ksm's uh, the workers are done we go back home get on video call try and sketch out ideas or meet up some random night <laughs> we do a night out Okay. Work on it through the night, and you know yeah, that's yeah. that's your night outs were <laughs> your workout completely <laughs> seriously. Yeah. It was it was fun. No, but so, it was also yeah. like as as a young like fresh graduate, like the first one two three years is when you have to zeal to like put all your energy into your like a professional thing. Because th- I guess what you put in the first three years accelerates what you you know you can do in the coming up of years. So yeah. it is that that was what taught, led us into that yeah. Yeah, to that. So, how did you actually get so many students to come to you? You talked about students spreading it, uh, you know, the message by word of mouth, right? Um, were did you guys notice that colleges were interested in what you were talk, what you were doing? Okay, so uh, basically, uh, we had these few students from a certain college, AMS, and. Uh, uh, one day we get a call from the HOD saying that you know these students weren't performing that well but we're seeing a marginal improvement in their whole uh, grading and they told us we went to such and such class so we were like why don't you come in and uh, explain what you have to offer to all our students we want everyone to be uh, you know this thing and we were like okay fair enough let's, let's do this and we go in and they were like really like you know sweet they were like lunch served to us and all of that and we're like okay <laughs> and we entered and we were expecting like one class and then we enter an auditorium with 300 to 400 students and we've oh been dealing God. 12 students a time yeah and Sanji and I just look at each other and we're like what are we are do this? <laughs> we're not prepared for this and we just like okay we and we hadn't worked on a presentation enough that it was good enough for 300 students we're like okay it's gonna be one class of like second year third year whatever and it was even thesis students so it was year one to year five everyone was master in that, students also were there in that wrong. auditorium yeah. MR students, students. So we sat and we presented the whole thing. There was a lot of interaction. A lot of students asked this, you know, like, you know, how do you do this? How will you? That's the first time we actually started getting questions. Like, I already know, say, three out of nine softwares that you're doing. So will you be able to give me only for the other six? Can you start splitting the package up? So there are a lot of these ideas came in of splitting packages up yeah. for you know, okay, you're charging an X amount for that. I don't want the whole thing. I just want to know this, what you're teaching me, this particular thing. So we start getting a lot of inquiries that way after that that batch and we went back and we tried to, you know, restructure, see if it was feasible to, you know, actually do that because for those 300 students, we couldn't keep it in our space. We had to go there and and do that. Yeah. So I'd say that was probably our biggest break and that came a year and a half later after we started out and consequently after that we started getting a steady inflow of people coming in from that college and even other colleges because these uh this actually apparently even spoken to other uh, colleges too so we were getting colleges which are like even in the outskirts of chennai students used to come during weekends they they were like let's just join me they'll stay back later so there have been times where uh, Amar and I had stayed back even after classes to clear out clear our doubts, not just from the current batch, even from the previous batches. Okay. So they would be like, I had missed out on this class. Can I come and attend with the other batch? We'll be like, most welcome. But you might have to squeeze in somewhere in the corner because we can only accommodate 12 students, 12, 13 students. And then post that, we'll have a doubt clearing session. And sometimes for portfolio making, there'll be times where we might have to spend extra time with few students to, uh, you know, like help. Catch them, them up. Correct, them. correct, correct. So we had good time. Like it was more like learning and uh, from the uh, students also. So you did this for what, three years, four years? We did it for three years. Three like years. That is when like mid mark is where we also started this. We got this idea of a new thing where thesis students started coming to us. Mm. Not for a presentation aspect, but it's like, we don't know what to do for our thesis and you know help us out with that this thing so we started this new set of this thing this actually ran for a like it would run only for two months a year where we would be like we are like your unofficial mentors for your thesis where okay design you college has given you this but how are you actually going about your thesis management? Because I think thesis is the time where every student really loses their thing. You know, like, you know, because in a normal semester, you're told like, okay, one first month you finish this, second month you finish it. But in a thesis, you're like, go at it, it's like, your own pace. Yeah. So they would come and we're like, we don't know, we're stuck in a concept phase for too long, we don't know where to do. So we started becoming like, thesis mentors I mean we didn't know if we were qualified enough for this okay honestly the first two students were just like a pro bono thing we didn't like this thing yeah and uh, that, those were friends which we started we're like we can actually do this you know like 
start giving them ideas so we start conducting these thesis workshops as well okay. for like multiple students in total i would say in two years you would have done around 12 to 13 students for the thesis mm-hmm. part alone yeah because at one time we each couldn't take more than three and that was not a class that was a one-on-one, one-on-one thing session. like you know two hours you come you sit with your laptop and you work you bring your sheets we discuss stuff together so that was actually a very very interesting aspect like things which we couldn't do for our thesis you know we actually like let's do this able to help them do it for theirs exactly so uh the thesis aspect was one of like would say the most interesting parts of our whole classes thing that we that we were taking so totally over this three three and a half year period how many students did you end up about 400 students Uh, it was 30 batches that we ran all together and they varied around 12 to 14 colleges uh, it would be only. <laughs> That's a huge number. Ah, weekends were like that. Com- completely packed weekends. It, it was actually like a chart where, you know, when we started, it was like quite steady. And the second year was when it went really high, where there, there were times where we would run three to four batches at a time, where uh, we, wow. would, we actually started splitting. We would run three batches a day for three hours instead of doing it for four hours of two batches. We did three hours of three batches. We start doing that in order to accommodate because we were getting a lot of this thing. That's when we started getting some guest uh, teachers, like our friends, who would be able to help us out with this thing. You okay. know, like there were a certain where we couldn't just do everything on our own. Uh, for maybe a couple of batches, we did get a couple of our friends to also come in and, you know, take up a few lectures right. in order to manage that. So our second year was, I would say, the peak. And then after that, it again started slowing down. So okay. 400, yeah, on an average. Around 12 colleges. 12, 12 to colleges. Four. That means it's a yeah. fairly widespread thing across the city. You you got students. And from. what is funny is our least number of students were from Miyasi. Us being from Miyasi, <laughs> our least number of students were from Miyasi. It was actually from all the other uh, colleges, uh, colleges that we actually got. Down. So is that a good thing? We don't know. We, we were actually know. wondering why is it so that Miyasi students don't come to us? So, uh, but yeah, it, it was good. Like that's why our, our variety was good. Like we were able to reach out to multiple uh, students. Like there were yeah. people coming in from E Road and all to to do that. Even from Trichy, we had a couple of students. So. From Trichy, from E Road, who would have this two week vacation break and all, and they'll be like, "Can you do a crash, crash course, course for us?" So all these outstation oh. students we would do, which would obviously not be in depth as what we would do for the others, but we started already getting Rather some crash. Tell them what they need. So we got a couple of inquiries even from uh, Bangalore and parts of Karnataka, like uh, north of Karnataka, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, where the students are like. We heard about you, we got your flyers, it, it had come from someone in uh, Hubli or whatever. And then they were like, uh, so we know a couple of this, if you can just brush through, but we want in-depth of, let's say, uh, SketchUp, Lumion and then Revit and Photoshop. Could you do that alone as a crash course for us? And then we were like... But that was like an online class. No, no, they no, came they, 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 they for two weeks. Like a two week vacation, they would have a two week vacation where they would come over. Of course, most of them would have some relative or someone who they could be here with. Right. So those would be like in our, like your April, May holidays or your, uh, your you know, your yeah, December yeah. break is when we would get these crash course uh, yeah, yeah. for this thing. So you, got, you, you mentioned flyers. You actually had physical flyers that... No, no, these were digital. WhatsApp, WhatsApp, WhatsApp flyers. And Copying. what we did, one more thing was we would go to like spaces like these Xerox photocopy shops closer to architecture colleges where everyone would go for prints and we would tell them and we would print out flyers and put it up in those centers. Okay, okay. So we would have one near Mia CC, near Anna University, near Satya Bama, etc. etc. We would target in those printer shops and put printed out some flyers. So that spread the word. Exactly. Yes. So if someone goes in for printing, they would see these. Uh, these we in fact got a lot of inquiries that way. They okay. were like, we saw your thing at Nitya Prints. We saw this at uh, Pro Designers or whatever. <laughs> They'll be like, where are, you, where are you guys? Like, what are you guys? Tell me your background. So sometimes the students won't call us. So their the parents, parents will call us. Okay. They'll be like, uh, tell me about yourself. Where are you from? It'll be more like an investigation. I'll be like, okay, we have... And the, especially when you see two youngsters doing this, right? Like automatically, like, you know, you guys just graduate like were you oh, teaching our kids children yeah. Yeah. So we had to like a lot of time our demo classes would be more parents than students as well because the parents are like we are okay we're paying so money for you uh, money for our kids so you know let, we need to know what you're going to do yeah. so most of the time it was explaining to them what we're trying to portray uh, and all of that so so uh, did you feel that there was a a shortfall with with what students were able to learn in colleges 
or did you feel that you were offering something that was beyond what the colleges were doing which was more practical oriented in fact what i would say is uh, like i said in the starting there are things in a college like you know in an architecture school that yeah. it, it's like a default you know you are supposed to know this you are supposed to learn this on our own in second sem we did have a like you know software at all we had, we were taught autocad and very, all of very that. basics but yeah. you'll okay you'll survive but you know that what we where we came in is we want, we want we want you to stand out you know you have like 120 students and you guys need to stand out there yeah so i would say it's skills that you develop on your own ideally which we did but this was kind of like a cheat code we were trying to give you guys you know yeah. you know you develop this on your own but we're going to you know help you develop you will have to bridge your gap in college so that's one thing which we guys like like when amara selling we used to have very good designs but we didn't know how to present them we didn't know how to sell our designs rather yeah so in our workshop what we did was we told them see you can use these softwares you can come up with these things you can even like bring up a hybrid come up with your own ideas we will help you bridge your gap and if they have a good design we will maybe like try to make them explore like what's the best way to present it and then we can start creating them so we used to try and bridge the gap like apply the presentation part and the practical part in your design and then come up with something unique so yeah. we felt that was something that was lacking in our, our batch i don't know if that's the case with these batches yeah, but i would say that is something which i wouldn't put the college at any college yeah, at fault because our, our yeah. syllabus is such over the course of four years that you know you're trying to teach like when i started our architecture i didn't really know what exactly architecture is i knew a gist of maybe like a one percent of what architecture is so you're trying to te- you're trying to teach architecture and it's very difficult to also teach technical skills when you're when you're doing that though it is important yeah so i guess but now a lot of like ams took this initiative of bringing it inside college sure. now from what i've heard a lot of colleges are doing it in house as well you know like having people coming in to you know teach a five hours entire this thing so right. because it's not fair if 12 students from a batch are going and getting all of this where the others are not doing it mm-hmm. we are not are not able to you know get these skills acquired and at the end of the day when you have a marking done these 12 are going to get a higher this thing because they've gone outside and learned it yeah so that's when a college is trying to bridge this gap now and bringing it they in. now realize the importance of softwares so now what you are saying without actually saying it is what you guys did actually had an impact on the education system essentially for architecture i would say you know in a very small way but the yeah. things that actually matter but it's true right matter. if um, if they ha- if there is some way for them to gain this knowledge outside people will go for it Correct. exactly exactly the more you offer outside colleges are incentivized to offer it themselves exactly, correct exactly Absolutely. that's when i would say our demand graph kind of went down where yeah. i would say one of the reason maybe also that we didn't get mrc students is we we went to mrc we told them we are offering these we are your ex students let us do this and how and by then they had already started getting somebody yeah, to do yeah. it within within the college so yeah. so yeah i would say that that was one of the main things yeah yeah okay in yeah. fact yeah in fact we did have talks with this college where they wanted us to come on a uh, weekly basis like travel like 40 it was aim or which college no that was in trichy actually trichy yeah trichy they wanted us to come over for like two weeks and be in trichy and tea like, but it wasn't feasible with the fact that coimbatore we were, and even coimbatore if i'm not yeah, wrong yeah if i'm not wrong we did the coimbatore or trichy we didn't do it because we were at case yes, the whole time so we couldn't take a two week just off just can't yeah. in order to do that we do that so, so uh, and i think you guys also you sanjeev you just touched upon the fact that you guys were running your doing your own freelance projects yeah. which we will talk about in part 2 sure. so thank you very much for doing about thank you I, i hope like what we trying to do in this whole this thing was, was yeah is, is what students understand you know what is it that we trying to do and uh, try to gain because honestly like completely shunning our three years aside by this statement is the fact that you don't need us honestly like mm-hmm. if someone can teach like we taught ourselves that you can do that on on your own right. so it's just that bridging the gap aspect which i think every student is capable of yeah. doing doing on their own yeah yeah but a little bit of help also never hurts never yeah, hurts yeah definitely <laughs> okay so we'll be back for part 2 then This is the end of part 1 of my interview with architects Amar and Sanjeevi. Next week in part 2, we talk about the challenges a newly graduated architect faces with a focus on their much acclaimed first building project. To watch this and other episodes of the show, 
प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू श्रीनाग पिक्चर्स ऑन यूट्यूब और यू कैन लिसन टू द ऑडियो पॉडकास्ट बाय सब्सक्राइबिंग टू एवरीथिंग कम्स टुगेदर ऑन एप्पल पॉडकास्ट गूगल पॉडकास्ट स्पॉटिफाई और ऑन द पॉडकास्ट एप ऑफ योर चॉइस The music for the show was composed by Ashray Hari Shankar from Escapist Music. Post production by Tiruvikraman Srinivas Raghavan of SNS Arts Development Consultancy and production assistance by Abdul Jilani. You can reach me on Instagram at @shrinag or from my website www.shrinagpictures.com. I'll be back in 2 weeks with another fascinating guests who work in photography, architecture or design. Until we meet again it's goodbye from my lapor